All right, today we're going to be talking about the most consistent wide receivers in FanDuel. Let's get it. Just keep it, just keep it. Phase Fantasy Live with your host, Lonnie Z. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am so excited. The football season is finally here. Thursday night game was pretty cool. And we just uh, had a blast checking it out and getting our lineups all set. I had Gabriel Davis, and he got me in a couple of my leagues, 18 points. He did 16.8 points in FanDuel, so I'm really, really excited about that. I think he's going to have a big year. But what we're talking about today is we are going to break down the top 10 most consistent FanDuel wide receivers, and all of these numbers are based on FanDuel scoring and what these 10 guys did last year and what we can expect from them this year. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. At number 10 was Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro, he played 17 games last year. And of those 17 games, 11 times he scored more than 10 points. Seven times he scored 10 to 14 points. Three times he scored 15 to 19 points. And once he went 20 to 29, he never hit plus 30. So his percentage is 64%. That is how consistent he is. 64% of the time when he enters the field, he's going to score at least 10 points. His FanDuel price is $5,900. That's a great deal. That's a bargain for those points. If you're looking for someone to fill out your roster and you need to get at least 10 points, Hunter Renfro is your guy. $5,900, that's pretty cheap. Now, I think he's only going to get better this year with Josh McDaniels being there because he knows how to really really coach up slot receivers look for his numbers to increase even though I know Devontae Adams is there and Waller should be better I think Renfro's 64 percent is going to go up this year and he's going to be a, a much more consistent fan tool wide receiver 64 percent is not bad 11 times over 10 that's not bad but where you really want to see someone in the top 10 or someone you're paying money for, you want to see them more in that 15 to 19. And then those elite guys are in the 20 to 29 point per game range. But at number 10, not bad. Hunter Renfro, 64%. Coming in at number nine, this might surprise you guys a little bit because this guy, everyone think you know, we all know he's a top five wide receiver and a top five fantasy receiver. But how consistent was he in FanDuel? When you picked your team, could you put this guy in and just know you're going to get your points or get your value? I'm not sure. Jamar Chase, he comes at number nine. Now, he has 70% FanDuel consistency rating. He played 17 games last year, and in 12 of those games, he got 10 or more points. Let's break down exactly how he did that. In five of those games, he scored 10 to 14 points. In two of those games, he scored 15 to 19 points. In three of them, he went 20 to 29, and he had two booms. He hit 30 plus two times. So there's where you get your elite status from Jamar Chase. There's where you get your premium price for Jamar Chase. He opens the season at a fan duel price of $8,200. That's premium. You're paying a premium price for a premium wide receiver. But what worries me about him, five games he scored 10 to 14 points. And five games he didn't even score 10 points at all. So there's 10 games he had, you know, under 14 points. And five of them under 10 points. Flip side. He's got seven games that he scored 15 and above, and he definitely can win your weekend for you on any given Sunday. But at that price, that's a lot to pay on a chance. I'd wait this season to see exactly how he gets out of the gates, how they're going to use him. There's a lot of balls to be thrown around in Cincinnati between T. Higgins and Tyler Boyd and Joe Mixon coming out of the backfield. They're spreading it around a lot. So he is an elite premium wide receiver for sure, but his fan duel percentage is kind of low 
for the price that you're going to have to pay for Jamar Chase. Coming in at number eight is Keenan Allen of the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, Keenan Allen, his number is 75. 75% of the time, he was going to score more than 10 points in FanDuel. Let's break down exactly how he did it. He had 16 games. 12 of those games, he went over 10 points. In six of those games, he scored 10 to 14 points. And in the other six, he scored 15 to 19 points. So that's about what you're going to get from him. His ceiling looks like it's 19 points. At least last year it was. He never scored more than 19 points. He never scored 20 points last year all season long for your fantasy football team in FanDuel. Now remember, FanDuel scoring is a little different than your year-long leagues and even than DraftKings. You know, they all have their different scoring. FanDuel is kind of a half PPR scoring. That's how they do their scoring. $7,400 is what Keenan Allen costs. Now, to me, that's a little steep when the most you're going to get out of it is 19 points. I'm not saying this year that he can't get more than 19 and, and he won't do better. I'm just saying that for that price, you might want to really, really look somewhere else to spend $7,400 and maybe get better value for what you're going to get. Coming in at number seven is Deontay Johnson of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, Deontay Johnson is kind of interesting because Big Ben was horrible last year. He played horribly last year. And so hopefully this year they're going to get some better play out of either Trubisky or Pickett. But it really did affect Deontay Johnson. His number is 75%. That is what his consistency rating for FanDuel is. He had 16 games that he played. In 12 of those games, he went above 10 points. But look at his breakdown. His breakdown is kind of mm, sus. Eight games, he went 10 to 14 points. Eight games, eight of the 12, 10 to 14 points. Three games, 15 to 19, and then he hit 20 once. Now, that's not bad, especially his price range is 6,700. But for 6,700, I want more 15, 17 points than I do 10 to 14 points. 6,700 is not premium, but it's still... You're paying a little bit of money and maybe, you know, 10 points, people will be happy with that. For me personally, I would rather get to the more of the 15. But what it does tell me is that Deontay Johnson is consistent and he's going to give you some points. So if this is what he starts out of the gate with this year, 6,700, we're hoping that his quarterback play will be better. I think it will. I think he's going to move some of those 10 to 14 range and take some of those and slide them in more 15 to 19, and he should get a few more 20 to 29 point games. So Deontay Johnson, 6,700, he comes in at number seven. At number six is Tom Brady's favorite receiver, Mike Evans. Mike Evans' score is 75%. He had 16 games also. He scored above 10 12 times. Let's break him down. Mike Evans had six games that he went 10 to 14 points, two games 15 to 19, but four games he went 20 to 29. Now, that's what is sort of kind of justifying the premium price tag. His FanDuel price coming out of the gates this year is $8,000. That's kind of high, I think, for a guy who, the, you know, half of the time he scored 10 to 14 points. And then the other half, he scored 15 to 29 points. And then four other times, he didn't even score 10 points. So at 8,000, he's being, you know, offered at a premium receiver's price because he's a, a top wide receiver we all know that but the way his fantasy plays out in FanDuel that's a lot of money to take a chance like that maybe this year it gets better I don't know he's getting a little older Brady's a little older I'm not sure if he's going to get much better I do believe though that Mike Evans is going to have a strong year but based on these numbers I do like the four games from 20 to 29 
how I would approach Mike Evans is I would make sure that I did my research to see who the opponent is and see if he has a favorable matchup. If he does, you know, you can be better at picking him and paying that price and hoping that he gets your 20 to, you know, 30 points. So Mike Evans comes in at number six at an $8,000 price tag. All right. We're into the top five now. Pretty quick. We're just rolling through these things. I'm so excited that tomorrow is football. And I'm going to sit on my couch and I'm going to watch it all day. And I'm going to document and get everything ready for next week to get you guys all up to speed and ready for your leagues and ready for FanDuel. At number five comes Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams cost you $8,500. His rating is 75%. So 75% of the time, he scored more than 10 points. But let's break down how he did it. He had 16 games last year. In 12 of those games, he scored more than 10 points. Four times, he scored 10 to 14 points. Two times, he scored 15 to 19 points. Five times, he scored 20 to 29 points. And then he had one boom game where he went over 30. That's what a premium wide receiver brings. The majority of his games, he scored more than 15 points, and that's really where you want to see him. Now, I know he had the four games from 10 to 14, and he also had four games that he didn't even get 10 points. I understand that. But the eight games that he did score beyond that, he scored 15 and up, and actually six of those, he went 20 to 30. So that's what you're going to be paying for. A lot of people are worried about Devontae. They're saying that he's going to drop because of he's not with Aaron Rodgers anymore. I totally disagree. I think he's going to be fine. I think that the scheme that he's coming into is going to really be complementary to his game. And he and Hunter Renfro are going to really thrive in this new offense. Look for him to have another big year, this time with Derek Carr. I think uh, there's not going to be a decline. That consistency should go up. I expect um, some of those 10 to 14s to move up to the 15 to 19 even. So look for him to become a really, really elite FanDuel wide receiver. Rolling in at number four is a guy who really drives his fantasy owners crazy, but he's crazy talented. At number four, with 76% rating, is Stefan Diggs. Stefan Diggs comes with a price tag of $7,600. Now, he played 17 games last year, and 13 of those games, he got more than 10 points. But let's look how he broke them down. And this is what drives, I think, his owners crazy. In seven of those 13 games, he only scored 10 to 14 points. In five, he went 15 to 19, and then he had one 20-plus game did not get a 30 plus game at all. So when you're looking at that, you're thinking, man, you know, Stefan Diggs built his reputation on the big play on scoring touchdowns. That's what everyone was expecting when he came to Buffalo. But for some reason, the first two seasons, his game hasn't translated that way. He still gets yards. He still gets receptions, but he's just not getting the touchdowns like he used to. I think this year is going to be different. And we, we're, you know, I'm doing this podcast after the Thursday night game. So we all know that in the Thursday night game, he caught eight passes, 121 yards, and a touchdown. And he had 22 point, I think five or six FanDuel points, plus 20 FanDuel points. So he's already in the plus 20. He's matched his last year's total <laughs> in game one. And I think we're going to see more of that this year. I think him and Josh Allen's rapport is much stronger now. I think with the emergence of Gabriel Davis as a true number two really helps Stephon Diggs. So look for him to increase this. That $7,600 price is a bargain for him. That's not going to stay there. Trust me, next week he'll probably be up to around the 8,000 mark again or close to that. He won't stay at the 76 much longer. He's moving right into that premium territory. And coming in at number three, number three 
Justin Jefferson. Now, this these top three guys, they show you why premium is really premium on FanDuel. Justin Jefferson's FanDuel percentage is 88%. He played 17 games last year, and in 15 of those games, he scored 10 or more points. Let's break down how he did it. Four of those games, he did 10 to 14 points. Eight of those games, he did 15 to 19 points. One game, he 20 to 29. And then twice, he boomed. He went 30 plus. His fan duel price is $8,100. That's expensive. That's a high premium to pay. But I tell you what, he's worth it. Now, what kind of worries me a little bit about Jefferson is the 15 to 19 range. That's where he did his most damage. He had eight games in that range. You'd like to see, you know, half of those pushed and slid on over to the 20 to 29 range. But I think a lot of that, uh, I think a lot of that had to do with the offense that he was in last year. Mike Zimmer is a smash mouth kind of a guy. He was not trying to air the ball out. Well, here comes Kevin O'Connell from the Rams. He's airing the ball out. It's only going to help Justin Jefferson and help his fantasy value. Justin Jefferson said he wanted to be known as the best wide receiver in the game after this season. So he's motivated. I believe that he's going to get better. If you can get better from 88%, I think he can. I think he could slide some of those lower scoring games into the 20 to 29 range and get another, you know, maybe one or two more 30 plus games. Look for Jefferson to have a big week this week against Green Bay in Minnesota and look for him to really be a high value premium wide receiver the rest of the way out. Be prepared to pay 8000 and above for him every single week, if not 9000 depending on what he does over these next couple of weeks. All right, we're getting down to it. We are down to the top two. Number two is kind of a, a hybrid wide receiver. He's different than every other wide receiver in this list. And it's Debo Samuel. Now, Debo Samuel comes in with 93% rating. 93% of the time, he scored more than 10 points. He played 16 games, and in 15 of those games, he went over 10 points. Let's break down how he did it. Three games were 10 to 14. Five games, he scored 15 to 19 points. And this is where he's really premium. He had six games that he scored 20 to 29 points. That's amazing. And then he had one plus 30. So actually, he had seven games above 20 points of those 15. That's crazy. And his least amount came from the 10 to 14 range. Debo Samuel is a freak. I mean, he doesn't catch the ball like everyone else. He only had eight receiving touchdowns last year, but he had six rushing touchdowns. They like to use him around the goal line in different ways, whether it's coming with a quick sweep or they're, you know, doing quick slants or passes to him, but they'll run the ball to him and they will pass the ball to him in the red zone. That's how he gets his points. He scores touchdowns and he is pretty touchdown dependent. That's for sure because his receiving numbers don't jump off the plate, but he scores touchdowns and the way Shanahan uses them is to score touchdowns. 93%, you can't argue with that. He's the number two most consistent wide receiver in FanDuel. So if you pay for him, you're almost guaranteed 20 points. Now, what's going to happen this year? I don't know, but there's nothing in my heart that makes me believe that that's going to change anytime soon until I see it. I know Trey Lance is there, but I think Trey Lance is going to help Debo not take away from him. So at number two, Debo Samuel, 93%. That's pretty amazing. Now let's get, let's get to it. Let's get to the number one guy. Now this guy right here, everyone knows that, you know, it's no surprise who it is. Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup. He had a 94% rating. Now his price tag is hefty. It's $9,500. That's what you're going to pay if you want Cooper Cup on your fantasy team. 
but he's well worth it. Let's break down how he did it. He played 17 games last year. 16 of those games, he went over 10 points. But this is the crazy part. This is why he's premium, and this is what sets him apart from everyone else. He only had one game that he scored 10 to 14 points. And then he had five games from 15 to 19, seven, a whopping seven games from 20 to 29, and three 30-plus games. So 10 of those 16 games, he scored more than 20 points. That's a season for the ages. I don't know if that can be duplicated. I don't know if he can do it again. But boy, he started off Thursday night right there with, you know, 25 fan duel points right there, right in that 20 zone. Boom, right out of the gate. His team only scored 10 points, but he looked great. I didn't see anything in that game that makes me, you know, worried about Cooper Cup. I've heard a lot about him this year. A lot of people saying, yes, he's the number one guy in all of fantasy. Other people were saying that, no, he's going to have a demise. I can't argue with Cooper Cup. I think he's the best right now. He's definitely the best fan duel wide receiver and the most consistent. When you put your money down on him, when you pay up, you have to build your team around him. But you can be guaranteed just about he's the closest thing to a lock that he's going to get you at least 20 points. So you better know how to build a team, though, because he takes up a lot of the budget at ninety five hundred dollars. Cooper Cup is amazing. Look for him to continue the way he's been going. I don't see anything that's going to stop it other than maybe Matt Stafford. You know, he's had that elbow injury and we'll see if they're hiding something because he looked really bad on Thursday night. But the fact that Matt Stafford looked so bad and Cooper Cup still looked so good is kind of amazing to me. It's a head shaker. So there you have it. Those are the top 10 most consistent fan duel wide receivers coming into the 2022 season. Now, a lot has happened to a lot of those guys and their situations that are going to probably either help or hinder their status this year. And there's been a lot of new, new guys into the league. So this list will obviously change and we're going to keep it updated every week and, and give you the most consistent receivers, running backs and quarterbacks for FanDuel as we get you ready to set your FanDuel lineups. So for week one, my picks for wide receiver to look out for uh, in FanDuel. Now we're talking about FanDuel here. Uh, Justin Jefferson, he's a great, he has a great matchup this week. Look for him to, to really be the guy at $8,100. That's not a bad, you know, price. Also, Mike Williams, he's, he's in a, an excellent situation over there with the Chargers. He's only $6,600. So look for him. He has a ceiling of 19. I, you know, that's his ceiling. Marquise Brown, he's only $6,800 and uh, $6,900. Uh, he's got a good matchup uh, against the Chiefs. And then you got Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks, man, this is this is a real deal. $6,600. And, you know, his projection is, is 12.8 FanDuel points, but his projected ceiling is 17.3. So look for him this week. Then you got, uh, we'll just close it out with uh, T. Higgins. T. Higgins, $7,000. Uh, $7, That's what he's going to cost. Uh, he's projected for 13.3 points, but his ceiling is 19.6. So there's a, a you know one of those guys that if you really are looking to uh, to see for a guy that can get a high ceiling and take a chance on T Higgins is one of them. But I think my ultimate favorite of this whole list, and he's in all of my FanDuel lineups this week, is Juju Smith Schuster. Juju only costs sixty four hundred dollars. That's it. And you know he, he's projected eleven point five points. But his ceiling is 17.8. I think at that price, you can't go wrong. You cannot go wrong. So those are my picks for FanDuel wide receiver for week one. Check them out. Lock them in. Go out. Get that money. We'll catch you on the next one.